Welcome to Spill the Tea with Josephine. Today, we're going to be talking to Katie Stratford, who writes romantic comedies. Welcome to Spill the Tea with Josephine and Carly Stapleton. Carly is an author and she writes, I believe you write um, romantic comedy, right? I do, yes. Awesome. And uh, how long have you been a writer? I, well, I published my first book 10, 11 years ago, but I've been writing it since I was like a teenager. Mm -hmm. And what drew you to writing? Oh, I just love stories. Like, so my husband and I were watching, binge watching Stranger Things again, because I love that show. I love a team. I love a story about a team that has something to overcome. And that's not necessarily romance, but Mm -hmm. like romance is a team of two, usually. Maybe like another character or two trying to overcome whatever the problem is. So that's why I love writing is because I love to tell those stories. I love to read and write and watch those stories. They're just my favorite. They make me super happy. And uh, I noticed that you have a uh, series that kind of all the titles start with The Guy Who. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you tell me a little bit more about those? So that's my latest series for my romances, my rom-coms. So I'm a curvy girl, obviously, and have been my whole life. Even when I was in good shape, I was still chubby, which is fine, right? It's just my body. I get to deal with it. it. Um, But I, I noticed that there's not a lot of there wasn't at least at the time when I started the series a lot of curvy girl rep like Mm -hmm. I I don't I I like to think that anyone anywhere could fall in love with anyone whether what they whether what they look like what they act like who they are and so I really wanted to represent that demographic that just never really gets that as much representation as I feel like it should so I started writing about a set of seven girls women sorry women And uh, one of them is an honorary member. The other six, um, they met in uh, like a Weight Watchers sort of thing. I don't think I call it Weight Watchers. It was like an online weight loss group. And they got to know each other. They really like each other. They're from all over the United States. And they decided that they wanted to to keep in touch. So the, the thing that ties the girls together now is they actually open storage units together. A just random storage units that they find and then they they open it and see what's inside and so, so like they they buy inside. one or something yeah. like that yeah they buy one like oh, okay option. like so nobody knows what's in there they get like a picture and that's it of what may, might be in there so they always find interesting things and then um so they do that they call themselves a the curvy girl crew <laughs> one of them has a roommate who's a who's like very thin but she's an honorary member so she has a book too so that's I, i've written six of the seven books so those that's my latest series and it's been actually quite fun it's been really fun it sounds like it's fun mm-hmm. so um now you tend to lean toward uh it sounds like comedy in this series why did you choose to do that i started writing romances i'm not gonna lie kind of on a dare i also <laughs> write young adult science fiction and fantasy under a pen name but i uh really i really my friend kind of dared me to write a romance I was like fine I'll write a romance and I found it was quite fun but it wasn't quite as fulfilling as I wanted it to be and then I saw uh rom-coms were kind of making a resurgence and I was like that Mm -hmm. is my jam right there I love to be funny I love those big they call it a set piece that that part of the like rom-com movie you talk about and laugh about for forever I love writing those I love remembering those so when I when rom-com started to become a thing again I was like that is what I want to do because I think I'm funny uh other people I think think I'm funny (laughs) and I really enjoy making people laugh so that's part of it awesome and I really like your covers there um is there a particular reason you chose to go with like the vector cartoonish covers versus live you know model covers or any so I my other my older books have models on them and they they work great um, but rom coms really just the style online, and I'm all online, is mm-hmm. uh, is the vector covers. People just that's the style. That's what's selling. I wanted to be to market so that people could find my books. People who are looking for that fun, clean rom com knew exactly what they were getting when they when they saw my book. So I, I really just went with the trend. Also, I think they're cute, so that helps. <laughs> I think they're cute too. <laughs> uh, so. This first book is called The Guy Who Dated My Roommate. It's a sweet second chance romance. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the storyline and the characters? 
So Nanette is the main character. She is a professional clarinet player. And so she works on Broadway. She works in the pit. Um, <clears throat> and she uh, loves music. She wanted to be a director, but something happened when she was uh, directing once. And she's a big girl. So that means people have to see her from behind. And she tends to dance when she directs. And um, she got made fun of for that. So she left Aww. that dream behind. Um, that was in her, in her college years. In college, she met David, who's the, the main protagonist, the guy, who is a Broadway singer. He uh, wanted to date her, asked her out once, and he ditched her. He never showed up. So she's like, Ugh, whatever, I can't. I, I don't need you, whatever. So this is years later, and they end up on the same play, working at the same play. It's about to open. And she's like, I'm in the pit. He's the star. I never have to see this guy. Mm-hmm. Ever. Until the producer decides they all need to make some, like, social media videos and she pairs people up randomly and she pairs Nanette and David up and they have to make this like promotional social media video for the play so the move the book is a lot about that them trying to work together she's trying to figure out what else she wants to do with her music she likes to do she has a youtube channel kind of thing she wants to start so that's kind of her side goal and he really wants to be a, a hollywood actor but he's afraid of the camera so they work together <laughs> to help each other and there's uh, plenty of hijinks and fun. There's a, a some pigeons involved and some cayenne pepper at one point that make oh, it quite dear. funny. And uh, it was fun. I've only been to New York a couple of times, but I, I explored the area and like went online and looked at what would be around a Broadway's like stage and stuff like that. It was fun. My, my sister-in-law is a professional musician, so I got all my inside information about that stuff from her. I was in band, but that was like when I was a teen, so I've never been professional. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, that's that's the book. And then they, of course, have to work out their differences and figure out if they want to be together because he really likes her and she really likes him, but she's curvy and she is afraid that, like, he's going to figure out that she's not the ideal and leave. And he's just afraid that he's not good enough for her. So it's, it's very fun. I love it. <laughs> So you have some other titles, um, like The Guy Who Dated My Roommate and The Guy Who mm -hmm. Ghosted Me. Uh, how do you come up with such fun titles? Uh, oh, I hate to admit this, but my husband is really good at titles. Don't tell him that. He will <laughs> his ego. He does not need that. But he's really good, actually. And a lot of times, uh, like The Ghosted, The Guy Who Ghosted Me, mm -hmm. my favorite title in the series. I just love the title. Uh, I think it's, it's a great title. It caught my well. attention. Yeah, like it catches everyone's attention part of it is also like kind of a trope so mm -hmm. the reader knows what to expect like the guy who dated my roommate obviously that happened in the past the guy who ghosted me this guy ghosted her in the past and <clears throat> you know, the guy did probably stuff like that it helps a little bit so people know what to expect but also i just i i, I just think it's fun but yeah my husband is unfortunately good at titles it's good for me good for his ego you know <laughs> So uh, the next book that you're working on, um, when is it coming out and when is it, what is it about? It's the last book in my Curvy Girl series. Uh, it's the guy who became my grumpy boss. Pretty sure that's the title. It's up on, it's up on pre-order for October, but I hope to have it out much sooner than that. I uh, got distracted with another project for my pen <laughs> As <name>. we do. <laughs> I know, right? They're so <laughs> shiny and pretty. <laughs> uh, so that one is about uh, the last Curvy Girl in the Curvy Girl crew. Everyone else is in their relationship or married at this point. And she feels like she has to be the last one standing. So mm -hmm. she's got this insane attraction to her super hot boss. Of course, he's super hot and nice, but a little grumpy at first. And uh, she has to figure out that she can have a guy. And it's okay. To, to need a pers another person in your life, it's okay if it's a guy. It's okay if she's in a relationship. She just feels like she has to like stay the course of the last single person standing, kind of last woman standing. So that's what that's about. They end up at a at a corporate retreat. She he asked her to help him with it, and hijinks will ensue. That's what I, that's what I've got so far. <laughs> awesome. So why don't you tell us one about about your um other series? Uh, I've got a handful of series. My other rom com series. Um, the first one's not quite a prince. There's four in that so far. That is a series of fairy tale retellings. Actually, the first one. Oh, nice. Like yeah, it's a modern day Snow White retelling. 
and the seven dwarves. It's ironic because they're all volleyball players, so they're mostly very tall. Um, played <laughs> That's high cute. School, or played college uh, volleyball together, and one of them is getting married. And so the first book is about his marriage and like one of their friends, like their manager, mm-hmm. he's the guy, he's the prince. So the the girl and the guy in that are um, both television producers. They're kind of rivals. They get stuck in this bed and breakfast together. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite funny. There's a whole moose scene that people remember because it's funny. <laughs> I still laugh when I read it. Uh, so all those are just, every one of the guys is going to have a book eventually. I I will not do seven books in a series again. It takes so long to write them. <laughs> Probably stick it down to four from now on, three or four. But it's been really fun writing those. Uh, the next one will be Rapunzel. I don't know when that one's going to come out. Later this year, maybe early next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my other rom, like pure rom com series, and those have been a delight to write, like super fun. And then I've got a set of five Decker brothers. That's uh, not a rom com necessarily. Well, it wasn't written as a rom com. There's definitely funny parts in it. Those are small town second chance romances. Uh, the guy, no, sorry, he's just a friend. There's three series, three in that series, and they are. I wrote those during COVID. And I just wanted something happy for people to read and me to write because I was writing a post-apocalyptic book at the time for my pen name. Not exactly what you want to be writing when the world feels like it might be ending. I I think COVID definitely was a precursor to bring back the rom-com. I agree. You know, people wanted something lighter. Mm -hmm. So that series, a little uh, He's Just a Friend series, there's three of those. Again, three friends and how they fall in love again. And those are super fun and super cute. Then I've got a, a set of old football. Well, they're kind of old. They're my first series was a football romances, which mm-hmm. is so cute. The fourth book in that one is might be the, my favorite romance I've ever written. Don't tell the others, <laughs> but it's so cute and so good. Um, and it is another curvy girl book, actually. Um, she's a music teacher. He's a football player. They don't. They're not supposed to get along, right? Right. <clears throat> and what else? Oh, and a big hearted, like a big hearted series. So there's three guys who are just really, really nice. A boss, a billionaire, and a... Now I can't remember. Oh, uh, no. Billionaire, boss. Oh, it's another football player. Yeah. Anyway, lots of books. I like writing. So how many books have you written so far? Uh, I think Carly, for Carly, I have, I think it's 25. 25, 25. romances. Yeah, wow. Good for you. Yeah, thanks. that's quite a few. Yeah, I'm full time, so this is what I do. So I don't have oh, nice. I have another job, which is helpful for sure. Yeah, that definitely speeds up the process. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how do you get your ideas? Oh, you know, for a long time, I didn't think I had more than one idea. Like when I was starting out writing, I was doing YA stuff, and I had this post-apocalyptic story that I adore, and I thought that was the only idea I'd ever had. And then I sort of started poking at other ideas. And mm-hmm. now they're everywhere. So my next rom rom com series will probably be set on a cruise ship because we went on a, I love cruising and we went on a cruise a couple months ago. <clears throat> and I thought, how fun would it be to have like three or four girls and and guys fall in love on the same cruise and like write them at the same time and release them at the same time so they all overlap. Mm-hmm. That's a big project. That's going to take me a while. But usually I find something in real life that's like, hmm, oh. That makes it, mm, yeah. And then I remember it. So if I don't remember it in three days, then it's garbage. But if I remember it, it might be. <laughs> That's how I judge it. <laughs> so do you have a particular like method and how you write your scenes or <clears throat> like, um, especially when it comes to your funny scenes, like, is there a particular formula that you kind of follow? Uh, I definitely read a book called writing the romantic comedy I think is what it's called it's on my kindle um and they specifically talked about that big set scene like I was that piece I was talking about like the big funny you're gonna remember it forever kind of Mm -hmm. thing kind of how to lead up to that and how to write that and I do follow a lot of what he said um humor in general I think comes kind of naturally to me but I do have a book another book that I need to read about writing humor specifically so that I know jokes can land really well in like triplets or something but I'm not quite sure how it works like I said I think I sometimes do it naturally but other times not so I'm Mm -hmm. actually working on my humor specifically to try to tighten it up and make it a little better um I do outline 
but I often just outline a few chapters ahead of where I am. So okay. I kind of know what I'm writing that day. Uh, I have an overall of what I want to happen, but I, I used to outline everything first. And I would just go so off the rails. <laughs> like I would be like, <laughs> we'll start here. And then well, we'd be way over here. So I, I kind of have big points outlined. And then I'll kind of go between them. And uh, how I get there is sometimes a, a surprise. Sometimes not. So I'm, I used to be just an outliner. Now I pants a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I expect your characters take off with you a lot and surprise you. <laughs> just like they surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do. They do. Not as much as some people, because I feel like I'm a control freak. So things start going awry. I'm like, oh, that's not. But then I'll think about it. If it's right for the story, then I'll keep going. I was going to say, usually my characters, it's its not so much the main ones. It's the secondary ones that will come out and say and do something. And I'll roll with it. And then I'll come back a few days later and go, okay, that has to be cut. <laughs> it wasn't right. <laughs> or, oh, that actually works. <laughs> Those secondary characters are troublesome. I completely they agree are. with that. Yeah. <laughs> So your books, are they um, wide or are they exclusively to Amazon? Right now, everything's just in Amazon. I haven't. Okay. And are you in, in in Kindle Unlimited? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's where I get most of my, most of my readership is through Kindle mm -hmm. Unlimited. At some point, I might go wide. I haven't decided. I know it's a big trend right now to sell from your own like store and stuff like that. And I do see and understand the benefits of that. I just haven't. I don't think it's quite time for me to do that yet. So I'm waiting. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody needs to make the transition on their own time, whether it's worth it to them or not. Right. Exactly. And depending how the market goes too. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, do you have any advice for readers or um, sorry, I was going to say new writers <laughs> who are looking to uh, go into the romance or romantic comedy market? Oh, so the, the first thing is the, write a book like there's a girl in my neighborhood who actually found out I was a writer and she'd always wanted to write and she'd written this whole series in high school but it was so much like Twilight and then Twilight came out yeah that she like threw it away and was super mad about it so she found out I was an author and just kind of started bugging me like what do I do what do I do I was like we'll write a book so she wrote a book and now she's had like five books out in like two years awesome so that's been really cool but really that's I mean don't give up Keep going, like finding an audience can be hard, but it can be done. Find ways to market, but really, really, if you don't have a book that you love, it, it doesn't matter. So try to finish that first book, like finish that first book, be excited about it, start a new book. That's mm -hmm. what I did. Butt and share and write some words. That's what you got to do. And um, for you, you had mentioned that you have like 25 books under this pen name, right? And you've got obviously books under another pen name then. Um, do you tend to write books really fast or is it a slower process? How long does it usually take you on average to get one done? And how big is that book? Uh, so I write pretty fast. I like mm -hmm. to, I just like to write fast. It's like a challenge for me. Like, ooh, how many words can I write today? Or can I get this many words done in 20 minutes or whatever? <clears throat> so so but, you like doing sprints right I I I didn't used to but I've just kind of learned to love them actually because it's so if okay so the last six months after my last book came out my last rom-com it broke me somehow I don't know my brain just oh. like fizzled it was weird I think I, I had to change it so many times I just got discouraged so I've had a hard time writing but a couple months ago I went to a writing retreat and we did sprints for 20 minutes and that feels less threatening than mm -hmm. feeling like oh I have to write you know, a thousand words per day or two thousand words a day. She's like, I gotta write for twenty minutes. Whatever comes out is fine. I can fix it in the next twenty minutes or whatever. So that's that's been actually a lifesaver for me to really kind of dig in there and be like, okay, it's just twenty minutes. It's not that much of a commitment. I might play on social media for that long and don't even notice, right? Yeah. So that's really, really helped me. But in general, if I'm in a groove, which I think I'm finally back in a groove, which is nice, uh, I can write I usually write my rom-coms over six to seven weeks mm -hmm. and I, they are 70 to 80,000 words right now. Um, that's, that's where I've been late. Uh, but then I, so that's writing and then I'll, I'll send it off to my beta readers and then it comes back to me for two weeks for more revisions and then I send it off to my editor. So there's a like a 13 week process, 13 to 15 weeks between I start and I, I send it out to the world. That's if everything goes fairly well. Sometimes the system breaks and I just 
whatever it's three or four <laughs> months or five months but I try to keep on track focused <laughs> And what would you say is one of the most important things in your author business? Because it, you're um, self doing your books, right? Like yeah. you're an indie author. You're not yep. traditionally published. This is all you. Yep, it is. Um, you know what? The thing I found most valuable, well, like ads on Amazon and Facebook and stuff like that are important. They actually keep the wheels chugging on the machine of making money and getting readers. Um Really, I found the most valuable thing is to have friends in the author business. I don't, I don't, I have a lot of people I know. I don't have any like besties really, but well, a few, but um, just knowing people and like interacting with Instagram, like my most of my romance interaction is on Instagram um, and just getting to know people. So when people are like, oh, hey, I have, a, I'm doing this, this freebie thing. You want in on it and then mm-hmm. I can give back in some other way that's been really valuable. I'm an extrovert. So me and my computer alone for too long is not a good thing. So if I get to talk to people and interact with people and help people, I'm much more happy. So for me, that's been really valuable. Plus it's really good for, uh, for motivation because everyone has a bad day or a bad week Mm -hmm. or a bad month. And another author is sometimes the only person who's like, Oh, Oh, I get it. Can't even think of words right now. I understand. That was me two weeks ago. Whereas other people might be like, just sit down and write the words. It's like, you yeah. Know, yeah. If you could understand that, it's just not there. <laughs> yeah. <it's> not. <laughs> Meanwhile, two days ago, it was just flowing like magic. Exactly. And that, that makes it so frustrating, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Being creative is a whole lot harder than I thought it would be. I was a drafter and engineer before this. And oh, okay. there's not a lot of creativity in it, but there's some, but like having a straightforward task was mm-hmm. awesome for me. So sometimes if I have to keep the creative juices flowing, it's a little harder. Absolutely. So what do you find is the most challenging thing about your author business? If you, uh, if you could outsource it, you would. <laughs> oh, marketing. Like ads, ads for sure. Um, I kind of like, as soon as I feel like I have a handle on Amazon, the algorithm changes. If you're an author, you understand this. And then you're like, well, I was getting like, you know, 10 sales a day and now I'm getting one and I didn't do anything different. So mm-hmm. that's frustrating to have to relearn that and kind of try to trick it again to figure out how I can get my stuff to be seen I would if I could outsource it that is what I would outsource definitely the the ad side of marketing I don't mind like the Instagram stuff and the newsletters I love doing that kind of stuff but uh, yeah the other stuff not so much <laughs> so if anybody wants to sign up for your newsletter no, newsletter oh my goodness it's a ladder no <laughs> <laughs> obviously the words are not working today if anybody wants to sign up for your newsletter or to your Instagram, or to uh, look at your book. We're going to put the links in the lovely description here so that they can find them. Awesome. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention or discuss or talk about? I don't know. I saw, okay, so I saw this this fun Facebook meme from a writer, and she does Afghans. She makes the craziest Afghans in her spare time, right? And Mm -hmm. she... It looked like a peacock feather, a giant peacock feather, this afghan. And she put a little caption under it that said, uh, that thing that's crazy, the one you think is too crazy to do, just do it. And sometimes I think as authors, we're a little bit careful and a little bit scared and creatives in general to really show our stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did when I moved into rom-com was like, you know what? I am funny. I love funny things. I I, I humor is my favorite thing like if a if a show or a book doesn't have humor I will usually not get through it mm. it has to be something so I embraced that little thing about myself that I'd always wanted to and just went for it and it's it felt crazy at the time there weren't a ton of rom-coms I didn't have a giant audience um but it really worked so maybe if you're if someone's thinking about oh maybe I should do this thing just try it I saw I was looking at uh, YouTube stuff a while ago and a lady was like, I spent years thinking I wanted to do mm, uh, makeup tutorials on YouTube. She's like, oh, years. I was so excited. I finally got all the stuff and did one and found out she hated it. She's like, I wish it was too much work. It was hot. Like all these things she just did not like about it. She's like, I love watching them. I do not love making them. She's like, I wish I would have known that three years ago. That way I could have focused my dreaming on something else, on something that I might like Mm -hmm. so just try stuff just try it if you don't like it it's fine you don't have to do it again but maybe you'll fall in love with something you weren't quite sure about and I think too we have to stop waiting for things to be absolutely perfect 
Okay. Because if you wait for it to be perfect, it's never going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, Carly. Oh, I really you. appreciate it. It was fun having you. And hopefully when you have your next release to come out, you can come on again and tell us all about it. Oh, I would love to. Awesome. Okay. So I will get that edited and let you know. Um, I was I did get some pictures of your books and stuff. I was just wondering if you had like an author picture that you could I send do. me. Yeah, awesome. Send so if you can send me that, then I can put that on the front of the uh, lovely little video. Okay. And um, yeah, I'll send you the link. And we can go from there. Awesome. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. It was fun. I learned yeah. a lot. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you take care. And if you need anything else, let me know. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.